Welcome. Welcome everyone. How are you doing? Let me just get this set up properly on YouTube. We are streaming live on YouTube. And I'll be able to see your comments if you are commenting. Um, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know you can hear me. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Welcome everyone. It's Thursday Tea Time Live. We're going to be talking the Titanic, the monastery monstrosity that I came across in Gloucester, Chedworth Roman Villa, Anne Boleyn's reputation, and probably other things as they come up. So um, I hope you're doing well. And right, let's get started. I'm a little bit late starting because um, I don't know if you've heard, but the Queen's been taken ill. So I was just trying to um, look uh, what, what the latest on that is, but there's nothing out at the moment. Um, so obviously we wish Her Majesty good health. So um, we shall see what's happening um, with her, presumably over the next few hours and um, days, but welcome. So where shall we begin? So um, we're going to be talking about the Titanic exhibition. Um, I will share some, I actually haven't shared anything about that on uh, Instagram or anywhere else yet, but I'll talk to you about that and I will share some things after this. The Titanic exhibition is um, moving around the country. So I've managed to grab it while it was in Gloucester. Also, while I was there, um, I walked past the, if you, you if you saw my Instagram story, I walked past, um, it was, was it, did I say it was Blackfriars or Greyfriars? There's, there's different monasteries, obviously um, ruins of such, dotted over the fabulous, uh, fabulously historically uh, wealthy town of Gloucester, historically wealthy. Um, and uh, yeah, there was this, incredible remains and then this monstrosity i will talk to you more about that later but i also while i was in the area went to a place called chedworth um roman villa expecting something um it's run by national trust and i was half expecting it to be somewhere that um um sorry so i just read someone saying about hms victory we can talk about that um uh yeah, I was expecting something that was just open air and um, and I don't know, free, even free. I, I had no idea when I went what it was going to be like. And uh, it was really substantial. So I want to talk to you about that. And also Anne Boleyn's reputation, because that was what we were talking about on History After Dark last night. For any of you who don't know, I do a weekly live um, with Dr. Kat Marchant, who is reading the past on YouTube, massive channel on YouTube, and uh, Catherine Brooks, who is not just the Tudor tracker on uh, Instagram. And we do, in fact, we've been going for about two years. We began during the uh, the lockdown on Clubhouse talking about history, but it's history after dark. One, because it's late at night, well, later at night. Actually, it's late for me. <laughs> I'm an early riser and uh, anyway, it's quarter past eight every night. So it's after dark. It's literally after dark, but also it's a, um, it's a no holds barred talk, uh, you know, way of just presenting. So if we swear, we swear, if we, we talk about really grainy uh, levels of detail, um, uh, granular levels of detail about some of the things that we talk about <laughs> so some is unsavory perhaps for the daytime it's just really fun but last night we had owen emerson dr owen emerson join us and talk about anne boleyn's reputation now lisa i think you're on today and you asked if you would uh, if while we we're doing that you asked if i would go over or talk about Owen's book, which he um, co-wrote with Kate McCaffrey, who is um, another another assistant curator at Hever Castle. So I will I will go through a little bit about the, about their book on Anne later, which Lisa asked for. So that's fine. Um, uh, right, let me see. Someone mentioned HMS Victory. Yes, she is still in commission. She doesn't. Um, I mean, she's uh, dock bound. <laughs> whatever the proper term for it is. But yes, she is still there. And I, uh, for the years running up to 2020, which you know, I don't like to talk about, uh, I would go to Victory every Christmas. In fact, I went to the historic Royal, um, yeah, the dockyard at Portsmouth uh, every Christmas. So 
um, and visit Victory and the Mary Rose, of course, who is just outside. And she she has, she's stationed. She has um, sailors on on board, just two, in the little office where you can walk around. Anyway, happy tea time live. Have you got a cup of tea with you? It might be the wrong time of day where you are for tea. Um, and indeed, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us all the way from India. I am fine. Thank you. I'm very good. I'm very good. It has been a long time. So I took the summer off. Any of you who were um, uh, here last week will know I took five, six, maybe seven weeks off, actually, because I was on tour just before the school summer holidays. And then I uh, decamped and set up um, <laughs> my my. Uh, semi felt almost permanent office in a camp field on Exmoor which I just loved oh at least it's got the PG tips going excellent and um but now I'm back back in the office however let me just tell you quickly next week I will be doing this on Tuesday you don't even have to wait a week till next next time that's because I am doing a uh, a three-day first aid course how boring uh, but yes so next week so that that I'm doing on Thursday and the week after I will be on tour. So follow, make sure you're following, keeping an eye out for me on Instagram because we are on progress with Anne Berlin. Um, uh, is it next week I go on tour? So I go on tour on the, the beginning date is the 18th, which is a week on Sunday. And uh, yeah, so we go on progress with Anne Berlin. We're following it's myself and um, with me, joining me is Dr. Sarah Morris, who's the Tudor Travel Guide. Um, Brian, wet Cornwall. It's always, didn't you say it was wet Cornwall yesterday? Actually, it is. It is. People are worried about no rain, but well, you've got it now. Don't worry about it. Um, hi, Jenna. How are you? Um, uh, Jen, been thinking about where I could go for a couple of days away. I'm down to Gloucester and Winchester. Perfect. That'd be lovely. Really, really nice places to go. Well, yeah, <laughs> it is nice. Gloucester's, Gloucester's interesting. It, um, it has got incredibly, an incredibly long history. Um, I went into the, hi, Michael, how are you? I went into the Gloucester Museum and that is actually, if you go in, you can see part of the original town wall as when it was Roman town, Roman city. Um, yeah, first aid course. I am everything. I make the tea. I'm the first aider. I do the account. Oh, boring, boring. I do everything. Um, although Catherine now helps me, so that's really cool. So yeah, if you go into the museum, which is where I went for the Titanic exhibition, it's on till the 29th of September in Gloucester, I think, um, if you're heading to Gloucester. Um, oh, Amy's off to Scotland. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I, I was going to get up to Scotland, um, again, 2020, Sarah, Sarah managed to go. Um, so that's still on my list as well. Oh, Kim's in Scotland. Hello. Um, so yeah, so in the museum, you can actually see part of the original gate. You're actually, um, near to one of the gates into the city. Now, if any of you have been to Rome, or it won't just be Rome, but the, the they didn't bury people in the cities. And so you had um, people buried along the roads into the towns or cities, and uh, presumably along the outer wall as well. And so not only do you see a section of the wall, the, the original, um, it was, uh, Gleven was the name, I think, in, in Roman times. Um, but, um, yeah, not only can you see the wall, but you can see a couple of the tombs, a couple of the coffins, stone coffins that were put there, that were, you know, someone was buried there. Um, so that was quite staggering. And then, like I say, um, I came across uh, Blackfriars, I'm sure it's Blackfriars. Greyfriars, I think, is the other one. I might have it mixed up. But um, now that Greyfriars, Blackfriars, sorry, is behind the museum. And in between, just there's buildings everywhere. There's buildings everywhere. I actually came out of the car park, a multi-storey car park, as ugly as it sounds, and came through 
And I was like, oh, wow, here we are. It's just a monastery. It's a monastic ruin just here. And um, that, so the, 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 the fact that it's all built up around it, you know, things move on, pe- towns have to develop, whatever. But, or cities, got a cathedral. But um, any of you who saw my pictures, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll reshare these afterwards as well in case any of you haven't seen. Someone built, and it looks 19, I don't know, 70s maybe. Um, but yeah, built, built a 1970s, what looks like office, um, or like our old schools. Anyone who's been to school in the UK, remember those, just the buildings, just, they're just a lot of, lot of metal and glass, but they're not really not pretty. I mean, best of Hardwick had nothing to do with it. So, and, and, but in, in the end of the monastery, and it, it so you look up the, the sort of Abbey church, presumably, and you just hit with this monstrosity of an office building at the end. And I don't think I took a photo from the side because I was so upset by it. Um, but you can see how the office is, is, is actually within the walls of the Abbey. So that is the monastic monstrosity I was talking about. That's in Gloucester. But the Gloucester Museum is free to go in, as many of our museums are. It's wonderful. Any special exhibitions and you pay. So I paid to go into the Titanic one. Now, clearly, there's not going to be a lot from the actual Titanic, although there were some bits from the Titanic there. I started spamming Gareth Russell, who wrote the book (laughs) Ship of Dreams um, about the Titanic. I started spamming him with pictures of uh, things that I was taking because I was so excited. Um, uh, Yeah, Jenna, it does look like a school, like the back of a school, yeah half glass windows and it's just weird weird whoever thought that was pretty on its own let alone to put it inside the ruins of a monastery for any of you who haven't seen it i will share some more pictures after this but yes yeah, so the titanic exhibition i will also share some um images from that uh, after we finish today and there are bits actually from the titanic things that um uh, yes, Addy, we have, we, I mentioned that at the top of the hour. We, yeah, the, the Queen is, uh, we've had news that the Queen has got doctors with her and the family are on their way. So we're hopeful that it turns out to be fine, but um, we, 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 shall, we shall presumably soon know more detail. Um, uh, so Jen, I know what you're talking about. I was watching a video about it. Sure, it was Greyfriars. My school was like that. Falling apart by the 90s, yeah. Everything got thrown up, unless it was concrete, which they then had to break down. I've got a lot of concrete as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's all falling apart. Um, oops, sorry, comments coming up. Rob, used to live in Bridgewater, oh, down in Somerset, and used to be a beautiful Gothic building there. It was pulled down by the council. Such a shame. It was built in the 1800s. Well, I live um, in a town <clears throat> which I really should move out of because it has the longest history with zero evidence of it left. It has been obliterated, obliterated. So at least Gloucester, despite maybe consuming um, parts of their history in modern buildings, like I say, fair enough, people have to you know, move on and uh, and adapt their surroundings to what they need at least they've kept them so which is not the case where i am but the titanic exhibition there was a night dress um i can't think of the name of the lady she had a she had a quadruple barrel name i remember that much and it's the night dress that she was wearing when she was rescued um and that is actually on display, which is a bit, I suppose it feels a bit of a weird um, thing to be looking at, but really, I don't know, there's something about it that made it, I mean, it's a very personal item, clearly. A lady's um, night dress from that period is a very personal item, and now it's on display <laughs> in the museum. Um, there were, there was crockery and glassware, either from the Titanic and it had been rejected or it had been used on there and, and for some reason it wasn't on there when it 
Um, I, didn't, I don't think it was Molly Brown, Jen, actually. I can't remember. I'm sure she had. Oh, was it Molly Brown? Yeah, is it Molly Brown, the unsinkable person? I didn't, I think there was a photograph of her, but without a label in the exhibition, which was weird. The unsinkable Molly Brown. I think she was in it, but n n there was no write up about her. One of the little videos I took was the list of names of people who were on board and there's what they've done and it, it might not come across when i share the video but i will try they, they've um i think they either made them bold or they starred the people who were rescued so um so i was looking down for <laughs> names I, I did find my family name in there actually i don't think it is a relation but um someone earlier was saying that their family were in southampton and and and, and lost um family who were stokers the boiler stokers on the titanic and this of course happened and to so so to um towns where they lost huge swathes of their men folk and there's a book that I, I still need to read that's um uh gareth's um friend wrote actually about belfast and how belfast was left the widows of belfast is it called Someone can check that for me, um, which is another book on my incredibly long list uh, that I really, really want to read. Um, uh, Rob, there's an Admiral Blake Museum um, in Bridgewater, so history is kept well, even though, oh, sorry, goes up, and the old castle wall is disappearing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it National Trust? I can't remember who it is who's um announce that they're going to sort of if they get get given i think it's anything new that they are donated um that they will be leaving as is to decay as it does i might have that wrong but um it yeah <laughs> to be fair i like how can they keep afford people just you know, can't afford it palm it off onto the national trust don't really know how that's supposed to just be a it's not a bottomless pit of money but it could mean that we lose stuff so hi everyone thank you for joining um i can see quite a few people who have joined um joined since we've been started um i'm streaming live on instagram and i also stream live on youtube at exactly the same time um if you if that's a preferred platform, I look better on YouTube because the light is behind the camera as opposed to being on side on. <laughs> so just from a purely selfish point of view, uh, I'd like you to watch me on YouTube. Uh, uh, Jenna, it's astonishing to think that all of those men perished in a shipwreck only for more of the population to be killed off in six years time. Well, indeed. Uh, well, exactly. So this is, um, can you imagine living in a world where you don't know that the world wars are even possible, um, let alone that they happened and what happened during them? This is the time that the Titanic sank. Uh, whew, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, so many, so many men died. This is why we have a baby boom. Well, this is what my dad tells me. And my dad does tell me stuff that isn't always true. So, uh, but, uh, you know, we we get a um, big baby boom in the um, so when was he born? Forties, because we had a massive um, <laughs> the population was decimated. Did you see someone pick me up on the definition of decimation the other day? I'll oh, get back in your box. So I use use the word decimation, decimate or decimation either way uh, to describe the the city of london after the great fire yeah the great fire of london decimated the city or the city was left decimated after the great fire and they came back with actually it's 10 percent. of course it is because deci deck yeah all right um yeah <laughs> but colloquially we use it to mean ravaged you know destroyed but not completely destroyed anyway i don't know where these people get off but soon hopefully <laughs> So yeah, so the Titanic exhibition, what else was there? There was wonderful models. Someone actually has created a model of how the Titanic, uh, presumably it changes all the time, but is sitting on the, um, on the seabed. 
from 3D um, imaging that's been taken. And then they've created this model. So again, I've tried, everything was um, behind glass where people have been up to it with their hands and their noses on it. So it's quite difficult to take good photographs, but I have tried. So I will share those with you. But if, yeah, if it's coming around your way, then um, then take a look, go and have a look. The, um, yeah, so <laughs> people trying to discuss the next king and queen. We're not going to do that. Uh, thanks. So I've talked about the mon monastery monstrosity. Now for something much nicer, Chedworth Raymond Villa. So this is the one I said I thought I would turn up, especially as it's down a one track, one, yeah, one lane track. So if you meet someone coming your way, you have to find a passing place. And I thought, have I gone the wrong way? This must be a better way to hear. Anyway, expecting to turn up and it be just a, I don't know, you know, you just get the floor plan sort of left, the, the, the excavated foundations. No, no, it had a full on car park cafe a shop <laughs> um and the reason being was it is a really really substantial uh i'll say ruin but so it is a roman villa built um somewhere between i think it like pretty early on and then developed over the time that the romans were uh occupied or Britain was part of the Roman Empire so between um 43 AD and is it 450 AD and um and so so you've got all these um oh yeah I'm also going to tell you about why this I don't know if you saw my post I'm going to tell you why this really annoys me can you see that in focus um it's it's built in a comb that's spelled C-O-M-B-E, and next to a water um, spring. Now, of course, water is incredibly, it's sacred, but because it's required for life. So it's not surprising that someone of high status in Roman, uh, Romano Britain decides that they're going to create their villa. Now, one thing I found out, oh, ciao, Monica, how are you? Uh, Long time no see. Um, so talking about Chedworth Roman Villa. So it's bought, it's built in this sort of remote and still remote. As I said, I had to drive down this road that I thought perhaps I'd taken a wrong turn. Um, in a coombe, which is like a, a valley, I suppose, where there is a spring, a water spring. Now the water spring, the people who developed the villa, who created their villa here, created a um uh a shrine there um to the to the water goddess um a nymphium i think they call it uh in latin and that water though then also fed the site romans are particular about their clean, cleanliness you have obviously the roman baths with public baths but if you are as high status as the people who owned chedworth you have your own uh, bath suite and when i and it is incredible so let me see if i can um show you because what the other thing i noted was so this is a floor plan hopefully you can see that on youtube as well this is oh, it's going to blur this is a floor plan of what they've discovered on the site now there might be more sorry it's a bit blurry there might be more but what I want you to get from this is you have a lower courtyard and an upper courtyard. And in between this would be in a full, you know, two story sort of building, if you like, slim, but a building with a gate in the middle. Um, and that is the only way you get access to the upper courtyard. That looks very similar to a Hampton Court Palace or any of the Tudor palaces um, where you have your lower courtyard and your upper courtyard, which I thought, so that was one of the things that immediately, um, that I noted. Now the, the original um, 
villa apparently is this range oh, sorry is this range across the end here in there is the dining room is still left um and this private bathing suite now there might have been a bathing suite for women and a bathing suite for men which seemed to suggest that either they had a lot of parties parties wink wink or um or there's a lot of people living there i don't know but what's incredible is you have a lot of the mosaic flooring left but this isn't this is a roman villa so um can everyone else hear me okay let me know um this is a roman villa so underneath they have their underfloor heating now for some reason national trust in their wisdom and bless them had got must have had actors record like a dinner party type scenario which plays when you go in but everyone sounds like they're from pride and prejudice it's bizarre <laughs> really bizarre um they speak really posh oh have you had underfloor heating <laughs> It was so funny. It actually took away a little bit from from the atmosphere, but oh, never mind. Bless them, they're trying. But you can, um, uh, yes, yeah, so you can see the stoke holes from the outside. So of course, so the underfloor heating, the way it would work was there'd be a fire that would obviously warm the air, and the air would be drawn through underneath the floor because there would be flues that would go up towards the ceiling that would draw the air through and um <laughs> made me really laugh um so uh so you could see you can see the evidence of all this as well as the beautiful mosaics that are still on top so you have this dining room with the women talking about showing off about their underfloor heating as if they've had it like put in afterwards that was the weird thing clearly it's a substantial part of the building process it they have to think about it first <laughs> um the other funny thing is is you're in england so the romans had to do different things as far as i understand once they got to england because of the the wet and the cold i mean we have all seasons we can have all seasons in one day um so things for things like grain stores they would have um flooring that was they, they use these stacks basically these like little pillars underneath the floor some of them you see are stacks of tiles some are some here were just um, actual pillars made of stone, but that would create an airspace underneath the floor, which for a grain store, for instance, there weren't any of those here. But if you go up to Hadrian's wall, you'll see them. It was required so that the the um, the room where the, well, the grain store would be uh, sort of anti damp, I suppose. You know, there's there's, there's air flow through it. Um, Lisa, do you think palaces and castles were built on top of Roman foundations? Absolutely. So the Tower of London, um, it, so part of the Tower of London is uh, built into the Roman city wall. Um, Cardiff Castle is literally built, um, it's Cardiff, isn't it? Is it Cardiff? Yes. Uh, it's built on top of um so the, so the bottom part of the wall is the Roman wall. There's probably loads of other examples, but they are the two that come to mind straight away. Um, so yeah, so you so you have this di this dining room, the, the mosaic floor in there. I will, like I say, I will reshare the photos with you. But it's really um, there's a lot left but now. Um, oh, uh, sorry, I've got a comment here in San. <laughs> I can't do candles. I'm so rubbish. Uh, back in those days, who are the people that do engineering for trade? Was it knowledge passed down within close kin or outsiders can learn a trade too? Um, so we're talking in Roman times. I think you would have a trade and that would be literally your trade and you would have apprentices. I, I mean, that lasted for a very long time. I mean, we struggle now to think like we're trying to bring apprenticeships back in but this was the norm this was how you would learn because you would go into a trade and you would stay in it um people want more mobility now but that 
means that you don't get specialized in something and um yeah we don't we, we sort of have apprentices apprenticeships um lost out to a general education i feel i mean certainly if you look back in time that is what yeah, the norm has been replaced by um everyone going to school getting the same education and then we're trying to bring in apprenticeships back um but you you've got to know what you want to do which um <laughs> as the mother of a 17 year old i know is uh it's difficult for them to decide what they want to do i didn't know what i wanted to do at 17 do you anybody know what they wanted to do when they actually chose their degree <laughs> oh lordy um so you've got the dining room, but then they have this set of bathing facilities. And by that, I mean, there's a changing room. There is a, uh, so the Romans would have a, a cool room, um, which is tepidarium. I think Monica would be able to probably tell me. And the, um, no, tepidarium was the warm room, I think. There's a warm room, a cold room. And... Um, Mel, nah, Mel took that. That's that's a sensible option. Taking three years between high school and college, actually thinking about what you're doing. Um, uh, yeah, so they'd have a cold room, a warm room. There was a changing room there. There was um, a hot tub and a cold plunge. Now, anyone who like into your health, you've probably heard of the benefits of cold plunge. Well, the Romans have been doing it. Were doing it two thousand years ago. They knew where it was at. They took physical. Um, health very very seriously this is of course an age before um antibiotics and like how many people now just think oh well, i'll go if something happens i'll go to the doctors and they'll sort of fix it um you don't you don't have that that option i was gonna say luxury it's not a luxury don't get ill people if you don't need to um but it's a it's not an option if you're living two thousand years ago and that is another incredible thing the romans were here two thousand years ago and we still have um quite good remnants of um of of uh of what they were doing when they were here they're building michael colchester yeah another good example of a, a castle built on top of roman ruins um now the uh, we've got something the national lottery here in the uk and that has a lottery fund which goes towards um projects and they uh, there was money years ago and they've built so now when you go they've built this massive building so you can get really close to the mosaics because you're on a platform above the mosaic so you can look down onto them and see them so they have how they had they survived um so, so that 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 was only in the that could only have been in the when was the lottery started? I don't know the nineteen nineties, two thousands, or something. So they'd already survived the best part of those two thousand years, um, and now hopefully forever more. But um, it's 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 amazing. There's other there's other really interesting things on the site. So not just so this. Um, I really liked the spring. So this spring, the whole reason that this site is used is this spring that was used and they created the um, the shrine there at the, the point of this spring, they, they piped it into the site. Um, but then the mosaics are there, but you can see um, the switch toward Christianity. So remember the Romans, I mean, the Romans persecuted horrendously horrifically persecuted christians and then decided to adopt christianity it's not quite that simple of course but but over the time of the roman empire this is this is what happens and you can see evidence of that change um on sites like chedworth roman villa um there are um stones that have been excavated from the site which are now um inside but this is when I'm going to get annoyed, not annoyed, but this is right. So I told you there's a bit about this that annoys me. Anyway, inside the museum, right? The museum is banged smack in the middle of the site. And it looks like that. It's huge. You can't take a picture of the site 
easily without getting that Victorian house in the middle. Now, I love the Victorians for their enthusiasm. I really do. Um, but if someone said they want they were going to propose taking that down, I would actually say that was probably that's probably the one one of the only follow on history because I, I like follow on history. I like the fact that sites get reused and, and altered and adapted. It's probably the only thing I ever have ever thought if someone proposed taking that down, even though it's already 200 years old, I would I would think that was a good idea. Not least because out of this entire huge house, which might be interesting in itself, you can see one tiny room. Anyway, in there is um, stones that were excavated from the site. Um, and you start to see the Cairo symbol, which is the uh, is a very early symbol for Christians. Um, <laughs> Michael, I wanted to rule the world at 17. Well, it's a good ambition. Unfortunately, the ones that get there maybe weren't the ones we choose. But um, yes, yeah, so you get the Cairo, and and it, but alongside symbols of um, of the 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 polytheistic religion of, uh, of the, the gods that the Romans were, you know, following. So the the, the shrine to the water goddess, you know, etc. So. Uh, they co they coexisted. It wasn't a right. We're all Christian now. People were effectively hedging their bets. I suppose, you know, what actually, what actually is it for me next? Who actually is in sort of charge of this mad world and life that we have? And so you can see evidence of that. Um, let me show you. Actually, there's a. I love these. Um, I don't know the name of the artist. I don't think it's here. But let me show you a picture um this is an artist's impression i want to know who this artist is because it's brilliant and without them i wouldn't be able to vision so you know i showed you there's the lower courtyard there's an upper courtyard it looks very much like um hi over there in italy ciao uh it looks very much like um like a later palace and this is hopefully you can see that on youtube as well this is the artist's impression. So you can see here the lower courtyard. It's a really substantial place. Up here is the building I was talking about that has the um, the bathhouse in and the dining room with the underfloor heating. Uh, and this is the the gatehouse that is the only entrance into the upper courtyard. Whoever lived here was proper they were proper rich they were <laughs> these are the these are the top of romano british society um there was also i think there was evidence of either some sort of market cross you know type thing i know they wouldn't have had a market cross but uh, or well or something down here but there's not they're not showing anything on there they actually have a lot of the buildings they don't know what the um you know what the actual purpose of the buildings were which is fair enough you've got like a wall <laughs> mm. tell me what was this what you used for we don't know and this is the little shrine at the top and this building actually um this goes against what we think of as romans with their straight lines and their this this building is actually angled slightly away sorry this this building is, is angled slightly away so that there is a gap to the shrine, to the water shrine. So can you imagine seeing that in real life? I don't know if in other parts of the Ro the Roman Empire there's anything left, but um, we have to do with reconstructions actually at Roxeter, which isn't too, maybe I'll do a little live from there if you're interested. There is a recreation of a, a villa Oh, villa as well. I found out. Actually, I thought it was just house, but it actually does mean apparently house in a rural house, a rural building, in fact. So it doesn't even need to be a house. It's a rural building. I didn't know that. So there you go. If you, maybe you knew that. If you didn't, I've just taught you something.
<laughs> so yes so we've got we're getting hearts and and yeses for doing a live from roxeter roxeter is interesting i'll talk I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, i'll do a live from there and then i'll tell you about it when i'm there um what time are we on so we've got about 20 minutes left we've talked about the titanic exhibition i will share more about that with you after this uh on my story we've talked about the blackfriars monastery monstrosity oh awful and I've just been telling you about Chedworth Roman Villa. So now let me talk to you about Anne Boleyn's reputation. Um, now, if you follow um, History After Dark, then you hopefully joined us last night for our talk with Dr. Or, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it. We, we began on Clubhouse. Anyone who's been on Clubhouse, you call it a room. So we still refer it to uh, as our History After Dark room. And it takes place every Wednesday at quarter past eight in the evening. And last night we had, oh, Colleen says, best History After Dark ever yesterday. It was brilliant. Uh, so Dr. Owen Emerson uh, joined us and we were talking about the reputation of um, oh, I should write a book about Roman occupation of Britain. I would love to. I need to write a book, but I, I think I'd have to write fiction because I would be completely, I, I wouldn't like to pretend I'm anywhere near the sort of levels of knowledge of people who write books. In fact, I have a, I'm looking over there because I have a Roman book and it, it's about the occupation of Britain and it's that thick and the, <laughs> the words are tiny. Oh, I, it's a bit scary. But there is 400 400-ish years, no, 300, how long were they here? 380 years, oh, I'll have to look, see, I don't, maybe Mel, maybe I need to get my basics straight before I start the book. Um, there were a lot of people watching last night on History After Dark. I'm hoping that's because, um, I mean, welcome if you are new to my channel on Instagram. I went from 9,000 followers to 107,000 in a month. <laughs> so um, I, uh, um, yeah, so I'm hoping that, you know, gets also eyes on history after dark history after dark is where we let loose let, let ourselves loot let, let ourselves go a bit <laughs> that's not the right phrase uh you can re-watch it yes um ipsa ipsa 1959 missed it but you can re-watch it on the history dot after dot dark instagram page on the videos page of that and you uh I think we went for just over an hour. So interesting. Owen is is brilliant. And um, I promised I would talk about his book. So at the moment, there is an exhibition on at Hever Castle. Owen is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, he is one of the assistant curators. Oh, he might be, is he actually curator now? Assistant curator, I think, at Hever Castle. Um, and Oh, what he doesn't know about Anne Boleyn probably isn't worth knowing, but it is, it's, a, it's amazing. Um, his like his, sorry, his, his depth of knowledge and lack of bias. Um, I talked about it last week. If you, if you, Anne Boleyn, Anne Boleyn is a character that people feel like they either like or they don't like. And I think that's a dangerous thing to allow yourself to get into. If you're someone who really, really enjoys history, um, <laughs> clean <laughs> yeah right at the end i think we I th so normally we, we i mean we might swear on history after dark we we get into sort of dirty levels of detail about all sorts of things um and uh but we were quite good last night weren't we it was very informative last night but we did we did talk about henry and his level of prowess in the bedroom um but yeah, if we fall into the, the I think it's a trap of whether if you if you really liking someone or not liking someone. I mean, your best friend probably did, like Owen said last night. I think I can't remember if it was like, I know after chat, but you know your best friend does stuff you don't like, um, probably, and uh, and you have to allow them to. You know, this is this is this is normal human relationships. People don't do everything you like, and you won't be doing everything uh, to their liking either. So. It was a, I thought it was a really great balanced conversation about Anne. And we talked about the, um, the allegations that were laid against her and the five men who were executed alongside her uh, in May, 1536, and how that sort of process 
worked, but also who was involved? How how did it go down? How was it concocted? Um, I mean, the, the, let's be very clear that the, the allegations against Anne were completely fabricated, but we talked about that and went into it. Um, <laughs> Marie, technically you were all super good up to about the half ish hour mark and then it was business as usual <laughs> if you do like your history a little bit spicy please do follow us at history.after.doc um we we are going to meet soon to talk what about plans for history after dark and we may well be coming onto youtube as well which which would be fun um we just have to get our head around the tech because we live absolutely nowhere near each other <laughs> it's uh just logistically difficult to do anything more technical but um yeah it was a really good it really, I've, I've, I've shared it on my story as well so you can go back and have a look but this is the book that owen and um and his colleague kate mccaffrey who I will be interviewing very soon, by the way, if you are a patron, many of you who are watching now are you, um, I'll be asking you soon. As soon as I've got a date for interviewing um, uh, Kate, I will be contacting you all on Patreon. I'll post on Patreon to ask you for your questions for her. So you can post questions to Kate. Owen's, um, Owen's colleague, Kate McCaffrey did, um, an amazing piece of work her thesis was on Anne Boleyn's books of hours and she was able to do analysis of the books take a much much closer look um and found writing that had been uh, effectively erased but you know, there's techniques to find it and what that writing told us about where those books went after Anne died remember remember we don't have a contemporary portrait of Anne because such was the um, effectiveness, I suppose, of Henry's um, wish to, I mean, he's a dickhead, isn't he? Just erase her. That's what he wanted to do, erase her. So we have, this is why we have no contemporary portraits. Hopefully, I mean, the stuff, stuff happens, stuff is found all the time. Hopefully somebody, like the falcon badge that was found at, um, uh, that was found at auction um, and and was and came from Hampton Court Palace. Somebody took that and hid it and kept it safe. Hopefully that happened with a portrait of Anne. We we you know we we don't know. The portraits that we have are um slightly romanticized version of her, probably. I mean they can't be too far, but anyway, that that's one thing. Um and uh I forgot where, I forgot where I was going with that now. Oh, so um, Lisa, I'm surprised that Henry didn't have a portrait of the two of them painted. There probably was actually. There was, yeah, you know, they had marriage portraits, didn't they? Full length. Um, now marriage portraits, they face away from each other. I think Dudley, uh, Robert Dudley, had one done with him and Elizabeth. I think they I think you have separate portraits. But anyway, there's probably lots of different versions of what they do. But yes, the the, the likelihood that there wasn't any portraits of Anne um, is very, very low, but we don't have them. Um, oh, that was it, Kate McCaffrey's Books of Hours research. So for two of, two of Anne Boleyn's Books of Hours, these are personal prayer books that take one through the day, um, literally the hours, you know, this is why it's called a Books of Hours for guided prayer. Um, for those to have survived uh, is quite incredible. And her research has given insight into how and who, who they went to and things. Um, so Ash991, so we don't know what she looked like. All the pictures online are not legit. So the pictures that we have, the portraits that we have are later. So that's the, the we don't have any contemporary portraits. We don't have one where she sat and would have seen it herself and says, yes, that's fine. Or somebody she knew saw it and um, we don't have that. So that's that's the problem. Um, we have the checkers ring, that tiny locket ring that Elizabeth I um, wore. But when that was made, it's 
going to obviously it would have been after um way after Anne Boleyn's death um but and there's a medal but I mean the medal if she looks like the medal no one ever says this but if she looks like the medal then <laughs> then yeah she doesn't look anything like we think um ah urban panache that's a good point wouldn't elizabeth have found and kept one if it existed that's a very good point very good question it could be though that there weren't any known about um it is when right if you want to have a bit of a um a moment of uh living in dream world have a look at something like country life or i don't know they might they might go on to right move but i doubt it at some of the houses that are going for sale that are like i don't know 10 20 million pounds they are old old places that have been kept in private hands now what is in the attics and the cellars of those places goodness only knows if if a portrait uh, or something of Anne's is in one of those, no one will know until someone happens to look and then knows what they're looking at. So, um, yeah. Uh, Lisa, maybe her skull could be used for computer imaging. Mm, maybe there's, mm, I'm really not sure how I feel about people being dug up. Because at the end of the day, why? It's to, it's to service our curiosity. Is that a good enough reason to um, to dig someone up and disturb them? I'm 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 not convinced. Like I'm not convinced um, about the bones about that we should get the bones of the um, princes in the tower, supposedly princes in the tower that are in Westminster Abbey out either to analyse them because as well, what are they going to? Well, it's slightly different with the princes in the tower because. Uh, people on either side of the debate as to who killed the princes in the tower think it's somehow going to um, or wish that or hope that there's some evidence there that would save for once who killed them but how on earth would bones say that I, I don't know what they think is going to be found um right sorry I said but I keep going back to the book so but Owen's books so Owen was with us last night and he has this book co-written with Kate McCaffrey called Becoming Anne and it accompanies the um the uh, exhibition that's on at Hever Castle mm, it's been on all year I've been very lucky because every tour group I've taken has been able to see the exhibition um it's on till I can't remember they said the end of September if you're going to Hever just take a look at their website and have a look and the exhibition um has been well because it's 200 years this year since Anne Boleyn was first sort of presented at the English court so um uh yeah so um so sand, uh, sandals sorry I don't know jam I want the bones in the tower oh sorry I want the bones in the tower DNA tested to prove they are in fact the princes but again for what reason like it's just our curiosity and we're, we're digging somebody up um is there are there any records of queen elizabeth having a printing of her mother i think the portrait on the checker ring is cat ashley oh do you marion oh i'm convinced it's anne that's that's what i think um uh yeah so i think we should learn from um I think we should learn from the past where we, so Maria's just saying there about um, the mummies coming from Egypt and, and, you know, the, um, let's learn, let's learn from the past. So, um, right. Who are they? Are you talking about Owen Emerson and Kate McCaffrey? So they are curators at Hever Castle. They put together the exhibition and they wrote this book, which I promised Lisa I would <laughs> tell you about. I think somebody, um, sorry much much further up in the comments commented how uh how much it would be to get the book the only place you can get this book is uh from heaver castle itself they do have an online shop but i think someone was mentioning the postage and packaging is quite high that doesn't surprise me unfortunately um uh jenna it would be interesting to find out who it 
here it is. It, sorry, if the prince is in the urn, oh, it's going off. Uh, but really, what's the point? It's not going to fix the past. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. So in here, what I would say is, it's if you can get hold of a copy, I mean, what you could do is come on one of my tours and then you'll be at Hever and then you can buy a copy. So, yeah, because the posting packet is quite high. So you put that towards a, put that towards a tour. Um, so yeah, it's very balanced. Like I said, Owen, Owen talking about Anne last night, very balanced. Um, Oli says postage is six pounds. Is that to the US though, Lisa? If, if that's, if that's to the US, that's actually not bad. Um, yeah, he's not seeking, um, in here you can tell. And when, when Owen was talking yesterday, they're not seeking to make Anne a saint, um, just make her real. You know, she's, she's not, I, I, she's not someone you'll hate or that you will love. I mean, you can do both of those things. What I'm saying is she's a more round, far more rounded character. Clearly she was a human being. And that's what this exhibition and this book and the discussion we had about, uh, about Anne last night on history after dark shows. So Lisa thinks the book's about a tenor. So, um, Melissa says it's about double to ship to North America. Mm. Maybe we can do it like a, maybe on Patreon. If you join me on Patreon, we can do a, do an evening story. And I'll read you a chapter from each of the, from the book. Um, actually, I must say uh, a shout out to Emma. She is my latest patron. Welcome to patron. If you want to be a patron, like I say, you're going to get to put your questions to Kate McCaffrey very soon. Um, who is the lady who I was talking about, who did this amazing research on Anne Boleyn's books of hours. Um, I'm also hoping to, uh, I've got, no, I'm going to keep it as a surprise. I'm going to tell you next week if they've confirmed to me, I've got two other historians lined up that I'm going to be speaking to very soon. So as a patron, you get to ask your own questions. They get put to the historian that I'm interviewing and only patrons get to see that element of the um of the episode as well so you get to get to ask, ask your own questions and you get to you're the only ones who get to see the answers also the videos that you get if you're on patreon are completely ad free and you get them early so there's lots of good stuff that's just one of the perks i was going to mention um i can't remember i did it last week but i don't think i did the latest version of tudor places magazine um and there's two reasons i'm going to mention this one is I'm really chuffed because my advert's in there, which you can't see because it goes there. Um, and, 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 do, do you remember I was at Wells Cathedral in May? I went there in May and, um, and Deb needed a picture. Oh, can't see it. Deb needed a picture. So I, uh, I got to share my picture in the magazine. I'm well proud proud of myself uh if you're a patron as well you get 10 percent off to the places magazine whether you buy a one-off copy or a subscription so so that's another perk but yes welcome emma if you want to become a patron by the way i've made everything available to everyone it's five pounds a month and you can join at patreon.com forward slash british history and i would love to see you there it would be very fab. I've just finished the next blog. I did that yesterday. I've written about the birth of Henry the Seventh, the sort of the actually the run up to um to his birth, not just his birth. Um, so that is the next blog that's come out in Patreon. And the next historian interview is Estelle Peronk, who uh wrote the book Blood, Fire and Gold about the um it's a dual biography actually of Catherine de Medici, the the Queen Mother of France and Elizabeth I, who of course were contemporaries and contemporary with Mary Queen of Scots. Um, so that interview is really good. So you'll see that on YouTube. Like I said, the extended version for patrons will be um, linked to on Patreon and you get it all ad free as well. So you don't get all the irritating adverts. Um, next week, I'm going to be doing this on Tuesday because I am on a first aid course. How exciting. I don't think I'll be posting you photos from that. That'll be a bit boring. 
that I'm I'm doing that. Uh, and the following week, I'm on tour. We are on progress with Anne Boleyn, with uh, Sarah, the Sheila Travel Guide, joining me for that. So there won't be a Thursday Tea Time live, but check out my story, watch us um, live vicariously through us for the week. So next week, I will see you at, uh, on Tuesday, one o'clock. I've already put the event on my bio so you can click to get a reminder um, when I go live. And I will see you all then. Like I say, in the meantime, if you want to become a patron, I would love to see you over there. It's patreon.com forward slash British history. But in the meantime, I will see you all very soon. You can join me for visiting Tudor Britain at four o'clock tomorrow as well. Actually, I should mention that. So welcome, uh, welcome everyone. Wrong end. See, this is where I know I need to finish. Right. I will enjoy my first day course. Thank you, Lisa. It's about the millionth time I've done it as well. Right, everyone. Thank you so much. I will see you all really soon. Bye. Take care. As everyone on, <laughs> this is where I have to find, find it on Zoom. Right. Bye, everyone.